were out at NTC doing a rotation in like, I don't know, January of 03. And that's when, you know, the flag, the balloon's going up. We're going to war, right? Yeah. For, oh, yeah. Well, everybody that was in the back, they all picked, they got the first pick of the units they were going to go to support. And so they're like, oh, we're going to the 82nd. We're doing this. And we're like. Oh, the guys that were not at NTC you're talking about. Yeah, the guys that were not at NTC, they were sitting back oh. in the tent. They, when the orders come down, they picked which, like their battalions were like, oh, we're going to go support these guys. And we're going to be with the 82nd. We're going to do this. And we're going to jump in and do all this stuff. And it was it was crazy. And me and JC were like, it was me, JC, Timmy Officer, and, and Nate Wright, or not, Nate Rice. Got, uh, yep. We got, like, just a shit. They're like, <laughs> we're bringing up the rear of the gear, you know? Oh, man. Um, and it was, we were mad, but we're like, all right. So we're packing out. And it was just so funny because our battalion got sliced from who we were supposed to support. And they needed an extra tank battalion to roll with third ID up to the initial invasion and so yeah everybody who picked their assignments got nothing got very little action yeah. and and we did see a lot so that was a good it was kind of nice karma yeah exactly it. yeah and they, were, they were all kind of forgetting about you and then lo and behold you get up there in the front yeah so tell me about that like you were we were talking about that the other day you said that like you and timmy and jc were getting into it over there yeah the, which uh, not real quick i've always said i said this on this podcast before but like the the armor guys that went to Iraq, I mean, do you, you guys really kind of set the stage? You really facilitated kind of movement of U.S. forces around there. Like if it wouldn't have been for you guys like you, you know, nobody else would have probably been doing anything over there. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, and I won't, you know, I was I was behind like uh, Shropshire and Crosby, you know, Travis Crosby. Like we were, yep, yep. They, were the, they were the tip that, that was going up from the third ID and we were right behind them. I remember – ripping out Shropshire right after he got in some big fight on at like a bridge. Um, yeah. You got a silver star but, for that. Crosby right. got a silver star also. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I, I yeah. ripped him out. So I, so I won't act like we were the first guys through the water, you know? Yeah. It was, you know, when we got over there to Kuwait, the, uh, our stuff was stuck on the boat. So we didn't have our one, one, three. We didn't have our Humvee with our pallet. We had none of our gear. We had to go borrow stuff. I remember like oh in the week before we crossed the border, um, we got a hold of 113, got a jerk to a six pilot. We installed it ourselves into the 113 and got everything, everything going on, literally borrowed equipment. We had one 117 go or one 117 Fox that we used and everything else was like HF comms through a 104 or, or back to the top. Yeah. So, so the, you know, but it, it worked for us. So the way it happens, we would kind of take turns. Like JC was the battalion into IC and then uh he would you know some days he'd be running the talk and then and I was uh I think I was senior airman and then uh Nate and Timmy were both uh, A1Cs. Okay. And so we would just rotate who's, who's Romad was gonna be who as, as we go out and do things. And we got to do a bunch of interesting things. I mean aside from the fighting, like I was telling you that uh we found an F sixteen canopy over there. Right. That was from one shot down from uh from first Gulf War. And had some captain's name on it. We strapped it to the back of the water buffalo and towed it around with our one one three and got it up to the ASOC and and it was going to get sent back to that guy. That was kind did of funny. Did he ever? Um, did he ever uh, get the? Did he ever receive it? Did he ever get it? I don't know that. Uh, JC might know that if you have him on because uh, it was one of those things where they shouldn't shift it off and um, other things that were probably notable. We had a. Uh, Remember when Geraldo was over there and he got in trouble for briefing? Like we had our, we got our pictures. We had just taken pictures with Geraldo. He was briefing our rock drill on TV <laughs> right when he got kicked out of country. So, Did he uh, get kicked out because uh, he was giving away too much? Like I mean, that's yeah, not a good he, idea. He to straight up, your rock drill. what we were going to do. Yeah, that's basically, <laughs> that's what basically what he did. He just straight up was like, "Hey, here's what the." This unit's going to move around and do all this. And they're like, yo, you can't say all that. It's like, so, scrap that mission. Scrap that plan. Let's start. Did you guys execute the plan or were you just like, well, let's just give it a shot? I don't even remember, to be honest with you. Um, but the, the one the one thing that we did that, you know, significant um, was, and I can tell the story because of Timmy himself, but we, were, we did this thing called a fake mission and we were supposed to be a decoy to move up 
to the town of Ahila, and we were supposed to draw like two enemy brigades out of Karbala to over to Ahila because we wanted to be like we were the main effort. And then the, the mil- then we were supposed to move through Karbala and up to Baghdad. And mm-hmm. that plan worked, but it worked too good in the aspect of we left out that morning, rolled straight up, and we drew them down to us. And then we got literally got blocked in. So oh, no. the fight started like uh, it was literally like game on. We're in a one with three sitting in between right behind the commander. And they're all in Abrams because it was a tank battalion. Right. And uh, right, right. it was about 10 feet, 10, I say 10 feet, 10 meters from the tank. A, uh, i trying to think of the name. 122 millimeter artillery shell goes off. Oh, yeah. And that's so they and it it literally blows us out like blows us off and it was so movie-esque when you think about like you couldn't hear anything except for like just a solid ring and you're looking around it's like dust like it's slow motion really you're like so man is this really happening and i'm looking i'm I'm searching the guys and take hey are we okay and uh everybody was fine but that was the start of the fight and so we were just being ambushed from both sides of the road. So I'm calling in airstrikes and Timmy is, uh, you know, he's just shooting every, everything we can. And yeah. the, the small gist of the story is that we run out of ammo. So we get down to like last mag in the, in the entire, and we had cases of, you know, ammo in the, in the track with us. Yeah. And we get down to literally last mag. Timmy's God like, damn. he gets on the radio. So Timmy gets on the radio and he calls the, the, the S3, so he was in the tank behind us. He's like, hey, you got anything? And they're like, yeah, yeah, we got some. Because they're just buttoned down. That was the other thing, too. They're in the tank, just hatches buttoned down, yeah, shooting. They the don't gun. Care. You know, it didn't matter to them. And we're right. in this one with three that literally had, it gets shot all up. It's got bullet holes all in it by the time this battle's over. And so I used my last mag and covered Timmy, and he gets out and runs like 100 yards up like through bullet fire is getting shot at both sides of the road, grabs this, grabs the ammo, runs back and, and dives back into the track. And then we rearm and are able to continue to fight. And, um, you know, for him to do that as an A1C, he got a bronze star with Valor as an A1C. And Man, that's pretty it almost impressive. seems like it should have been a little more maybe, you know, for putting himself in harm's you way know, like that, you know. He put himself in harm's way. And, you know, we – I forget this right up, but we had like at least six confirmed kills – you know, through, yeah. through that fight of just like small arms fire. And because those dudes are within, did you, guys, you know, 50 yards of us uh, on both sides of the road. So. You guys have a 50 on top or anything or no? Yeah, we had, we had a 50 cal and that guy was and, and the army guy and he was unloading and shooting when he could, you know, and, and then uh, yeah, yeah. ultimately they ended up running out of ammo also. And there wasn't much you could do about it. Um, so yeah. it resulted to a, uh, Apaches coming in when, when I when I had Apaches coming in doing gun runs, that kind of ended the the our up close battles, you know. Yeah. But it, it was probably I don't know. It's probably like a six hour fight. It was it was a good one though. And I, wow. I remember, I just remember when it was done, like you're tired, like the adrenaline that you know the adrenaline was over, and you're like, oh man, I'm just going to take a nap. <laughs> so a lot of guys so talk about really, that. Yeah, it's it's a real thing, I guess. So yeah. Um, Laying down, taking a nap while they're clearing some. Uh, they had already they had already cleared the, low, the the buildings and they were just doing SSE. And I was like, you know, I had airplanes checked off, so I was like, all right, I'm just going to chill for a second. And gunshot rings out, like boom! I wake up, I'm like, what the hell? And uh, the uh, commander's calling over the radio, "What's going on, Air Force? You guys got contact?" And I look up, and Timmy is standing there with his nine mil like this. And smiling, and he's like, "Damn, I'm more accurate with my nine mil than I am with my F4." He just popped off around and shot a stop sign just to see what <laughs> what we can get into. <laughs> and I'm like, "Teddy, <laughs> you know, it's a war zone, but you can't just like, shoot anytime you want." Yeah. <laughs> I mean, when they're doing SNC, and he just pops off around at a stop sign, <laughs> and just to look, he was just excited. He was like, "Damn." So, well, I mean, it's something to be uh, like, you know, you got in that scrape and then all, you know, you guys made it out and he was probably like pretty amped up still, you know, like pretty, uh, yeah, pretty yeah. excited. There was another time when we got a, so I guess like a frog seven missile just hit it, hit one of our talks and killed some people. So they were like, Hey, be on the lookout. Well, we found three of them in the woods 
like set up in their in their orchards ready to go really? and so we pulled up to them and they were either they saw us coming or they were whatever but they were abandoned like we didn't have any engagements there but what we did yeah. have is um one the, the batteries wouldn't start so they ended up towing it and then i got to drive one nice. and then there was another so so we're driving and we go take these three frog seven missiles with missiles on them right and drive under this big intersection on the highway and and then what, what goes through my mind at the time was uh I just hear this F six or F eighteen above me, just circling right above me. Oh man, I didn't even and, think about that. Yeah, so he was circling right above me, and I was like, I got up on guard, and I was like, Hey, <laughs> any any F eighteen over this location, grid coordinate? These friend, these are friendlies in this frog. Do not engage. Oh. You know? Did I was, Did you ever get was a hold of them? Or, uh... Um, well, they didn't engage us. And thank God. So, but it was a uh, yeah. I Oh man! Dude, yeah, where'd you end up taking them to? Uh, they took them to this intersection, and then at that point, we had did a battlefield handover, and they so it was like a big highway intersection. We we parked all three of them next to each other, and then we moved on and pushed on with the fight. I'm not sure when if we handed over to the people behind us and just oh, okay. continued because this was on the way up to Baghdad, so it wasn't like we were we were stopping anywhere for any significant time. Right, right. You know, yeah. So you so basically, you guys were just. I mean, it was, it's kind of like you see in the movies. I mean, you just keep pushing and pushing. You know, you may get in some uh, maybe a battle here or a fight here, and then you just deal with it and just keep going on. Yeah, that's how it was. I mean, we we held up. I'm, I can't remember the first two or, two or so weeks into it was the first time we even got a shower. We found some bus station, this Greyhound bus station that we held up in the night. <laughs> we got showers. It felt so good. But we went all the way up to the airport and stayed at the airport, you know, one of the terminals there. Wow. Do you guys get in any uh, any other significant uh, battles or anything or any, anything before or after you dropped off the frogs? There was there was more skirmishes, but nothing to the level of of that. Yeah, of that one of the one in that hill. So were you were the four of you still together in that one one three or was JC and somebody? No, in, so, um, no it was me and Timmy in the one one three. Yeah, it was me and Timmy in the one one three, and JC was in JC and Nate were at the talk. So oh, okay. The, so we had rolled back like, I mean, a couple miles away, right? We just pushed forward to from from the talk that morning just to do the decoy mission. Okay. And, I mean, but yeah, I mean, there was lots of other you know small engagements that took place. Um, sure. Even after Shropshire, you know, after that bridge incident where he got the Silver Star, there was still. I mean, you still had burning bodies laying all over the place because they just smoked them and then they rolled on, right? So sure. we got to deal with them, people coming to recover them. Uh. And, so that was still, and they weren't always friendly. I'm sure, you know. No, no, that was, there, there was there was many more little gunfights that happened after that. Not to the tune of that they had to deal with. They left they left a lot of people laying around, but they got basically ambushed in an intersection by a bridge. Yeah, you know. So that was a good that was a good fight for them guns. So you got to Baghdad, or you got to the airport. How long were you in Iraq? I mean, how long did all that take to get up to up to Baghdad? Well, once we got established in Baghdad or at the airport. I remember being there at least another month where we were, you know, I mean, cause we even got put on like burn duty, you know, and we were, and I remember traveling around this, we were traveling around Baghdad downtown, you know, with soft, soft Hummers with no, you know, no doors on. Like this is before IEDs were really a threat. If you think about it. Yeah. yeah. And then when people started having IEDs and started shooting, that's when we started armoring up the vehicles, but none of our vehicles were armored when we took them over there. Um, I think I probably got back from that deployment in like, so the, the fight was really in March started it. That fight was in April, like the first day, I think it was that first day, of April. And then yeah. by the time we got to Baghdad, I think I got home in like July. Like it wasn't, it wasn't crazy. It was June, July time frame We came home yeah. from the first deployment. Ended up going back like the next year. So that was July. End up deploying again in 04. Um, and I did that. This one was eight months, but I did like back to back. I did a four month one down in Armadi. Mm -hmm. And then, and it was fairly insignificant, you know, as far as there were some missions that we did. There was, we covered a down helicopter. That was not a good site. You know, it was, they had a, I'd say a 53 went down, but they were carrying a bunch of ammo and, and that like, oh, man. Pilots were still in the seats. You know, you could see, like, it was bad. We had to secure the site until they, because we were the closest people, so they sent us out to secure the site until yeah. they could come to cover it. But after the deployment to Armani, I ended up 
staying and going up to Baghdad and got into the Fallujah 04, the November Fallujah 04 fight. So that was good. I needed to do, I was getting divorced at the time, so I needed to stay and make money. So I was like, I'll volunteer to do another. So I did like eight months over there. Little did you know it was going to be Fallujah <laughs> yeah. when you went over. <laughs> right. It was the second Fallujah. So you had a spring 04 and then the November 04. And um, yeah. that was it. How was that, that? That was another interesting day. Um, a lot of death. You know, we lost a lot of Marines yeah. in that fight. I, you know the thing, and I don't, I'm not a you know a, a planner of it, but one of the things I remember that didn't make sense to me was we basically cordoned off the city and gave them like three days to leave. So there was all the civilians were trying to get out, you know, because they knew it was going to be a bad fight. And the thought was, hey, anybody that stays is staying to fight. But I think about how many high level bad guys got out, right? In, in, yeah, in like that way, because yeah. we live in the city. They didn't want to stay there and just get smoked there, so they're like they're gonna bug out and maybe try to fight another day. Yeah. And that was just daily mortar fires, just you know, it's it's so weird because and you know what I'm talking about, how unsensitive we get to things when it's sure. just repeating, right? So we took mortar fire from the OP because we we're out at this little OP and at least a dozen times a day you would take mortar rounds to where it's like it would hit close and splash up mud on the on the windshield of the Humvee. I'm like, yeah. oh, that was close. I'm going back to sleep. <laughs> you know, like it wasn't. You just get desensitized to to that. Yeah. But that was Man. that was a good one. I got I got called in some airstrikes in that, and and you know earned my keep during that battle too. Yeah. So then, how uh, long were you out in the OP? Oh, like a, seems like it was a couple weeks. You know that we were doing that. It se- it seems like the the fight was like all in November, but I don't think it lasted a whole month. You know, it just seemed like it because we were out there for the whole quarter and off the city. And then, right. Um, but that was just, you know, clearing through the city of uh, Fallujah. It just, like I said, we lost a lot of people on that one. I mean, we yeah. obviously we won the battle, but we took sure. a lot of casualties. Was it um, just, we didn't, I, so I try to always figure out, or I try to think about like how we lost all the casualties. Was it just the situation, like coming into the city? I mean, anytime you're in an urban environment like that and you're going house to house, I mean, it's, you're just waiting. It's, it's easy for the enemy to attack as opposed to you defending, you know, like you're just, exactly. you, come and that's, anywhere that's or you had, uh, we were basically going door to door clearing houses. Right. And yeah, you go up the stairs and they got the high ground on you. So, right. you know, dudes were, we were losing dudes getting shot in the stairwells, um, in the streets, they'd be out on the rooftops shooting down as you move through and you were just, they just constantly had the, uh, the advantage. Sure. And you couldn't just go in and blanket airstrike, right? It's a, it's urban, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. So that, so it's you know you know how it is. It's real. It's real tough to fight that urban fight, yeah, especially is. when you're not fighting. Uh, by this time, I would say we, you know, we were not fighting like the Republican Guard. You were fighting a little. Yeah, it's more like an insurgency at that point rather yeah, than uh, you were fighting you know, force on force. Personally. Yep. So guys with RPGs and AKs, and, and and how hard it is to fight onesies and twosies. Oh. it's Almost you know? impossible. And that, I'm sure that's why the, we lost so many guys because, you know, you look at a guy and he's like, well, is that a, he looks the bad guys look just like the good guys. So, you know, if he's not holding something at that point, he's a good guy. Right. And then he can just pick up a, an RPG or a rifle later on. And now he's a bad guy. So, yeah, it's yeah, it's such a impossible situation. Yeah. Yep. So it's from that aspect, it's like, man, this is but. Ultimately, we ended up winning, and and I went home. I was home by Christmas of that year. 